In this episode, we speak with RAF and U.S. Air Force retired pilot Stuart McQuillan, whose mission is to save lives with his helicopter. It might take me a little bit longer, but we get there. This is how I do it. Now I can, I can reach everything. My name is Captain Stuart McQuillan, uh, former Royal Air Force, and what we're doing here is building a Rotaway Exec 162F that will be used in a national tour uh, to bring awareness to veteran suicide. NV3Foundation.org, or National Veterans Vocational Village. Co-founder Stuart McQuillan was a helicopter and fighter pilot with the RAF when he experienced a spinal cord injury. An engineer by trade and an attitude of I'll show them, he invented the arrow leg, the only FAA approved device to put a paraplegic behind the stick. And his mission is to inform more people about veteran suicide that happens across the world daily. So if you'd like to get involved in this project with Stuart, check out nv3foundation.org or send him a message at arrowleg at hotmail.com. After uh, my injury with the Royal Air Force, I was approached by King Hussein of Jordan and other bodies uh, to come up with a system that would allow paraplegics to fly helicopters. So at that time, I was a 28-year uh, timer on fixed wing. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be involved with the British Army Air Corps. And between us, we came up with an idea that would allow a paraplegic to fly helicopters. We brought that to the US. Uh, for testing and development and in 2001 it became the world's first certified system for paraplegics to fly helicopters. Now we, we've built a roadway Exec 162 because we'd like to install our paraplegic flight system into an experimental aircraft. That way it makes it a lot more accessible uh, to everybody that wants to get into aviation. This particular helicopter has been painted in the red, white and blue uh, to signify uh, basically all our veterans, both military and first responders. And we've yet to put on the logos. And we're gonna do a national tour around all the VA hospitals followed by all the spinal hospitals in the US to raise awareness to suicide and, and hopefully give hope uh, to a lot of the guys like myself who don't know what direction they're going to take in life. And this will kick off about May 2022 and it will run right into 2023. The reason we put the ribbon on is that we want to add stars to it. Uh, we're not talking about the stars from our, our national flag but basically gold, blue and white which are extremely significant. The gold represents all veterans that paid the ultimate so, uh, sacrifice, uh, gave their lives. Um, blue is for like myself, those that are, are disabled. And the white stars is suicide. And unfortunately, the white stars outweighs all the others. Well, when we develop the this, this system, it's either a, adapt the aircraft or adapt the pilot. Um, and after many discussions uh, with DERs and the FAA, we decided it would be better to adapt the pilot, at least that way it's more universal. Uh, and, and what we've basically got is a pneumatic system. If we use electric, we wouldn't get the fluid action that we get with this, and it's compressible because it's air. Same with hydraulic it'd be a little bit too rigid, too robotic, and the inputs just wouldn't work for helicopters. So we can get full ankle articulation, we've got the knee joint covered as well, and on the bottom we have this little plate. Now this just attaches to the pedals, and it has a quick release fitting that we can operate just to release it. So if you change aircraft, you just take this off and put it on the next helicopter you're going to fly. And the, the whole system is controlled 
by a box up here, which I'll just pull forward so you can see it. So this is the, the heart of it. It has a, a special air compressor in there, proportional valves, uh, and all the other circuitry that give us the, the very close tolerance movement that we require. This unit uh, is normally attached onto the cyclic at the side and basically whatever I do with my thumb the leg is going to match it in real time, it's proportional. So speed and distance is very controllable. And we've got a lot of redundancy built into it. Uh, we've got everything from backup power and should the actual uh, source of power, air uh, decide it's not going to work anymore we have a nitrogen backup system on this which will give us enough power to get it onto the ground so safety wise we're looking at about six to seven minutes of reserve power whether it be electrical or with the nitrogen to get it back onto the ground and you said this is uh, already a, as a certified version yeah this is a certified system here so at the moment this is set up for an R44 but equally, uh, you could jump into an SA-76, uh, an A-Star, and it'll work equally as well. Hey guys, one second. Hey guys, you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days. What makes all this possible, getting this original aviation content, is sponsors like these. Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com Avionation at AvionationUSA.com Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. Well, this is pretty much how it starts. This is the second ship. It will be our backup ship for our tour. And it, what you'll see behind me is I've got this gantry because uh, it's not only build the aircraft but I have to build platforms so I can build the aircraft. So Bob here at Rodeaway Reworks said well why don't we just get a big gantry and we'll put a sling on it and you can basically power yourself up and down and that's what I do. I, I get into the sling and now I can get up to the head of the aircraft. Um, Permobil, uh, one of the largest manufacturers of electric wheelchairs, um, they've been good enough to loan me a power wheelchair that stands me upright so it just means that everything's accessible it might take me a little bit longer but we get there um and, and yeah it's a world first again not only are we putting our system into an experimental uh, helicopter but it's actually being built by a paraplegic which hasn't been done before so you know we're hoping we can use that uh, to drive on the program that's going to help other vets now, once this one's built, uh, it'll go back to Colorado and we'll be starting a program where we'll take vets in and do vocational training, uh, try to show them new skills that they've not come across and hopefully give them a, a better idea of where their future could go. The only obstacle we have at the moment is that due to the altitude, we need turbos on both our ships. Um, so we figured get them built first and then we'll try to uh, raise sponsorship and awareness uh, that that we do need turbos to complete the tour. The linkage is here. So this unit will actually go on, on the bar down here, like so. And there's two of these. And then these actuators would be attached. So that actuator would go into there, which in turn will connect here and one to the other pedal so that we can get the push-pull action. These are fed by airlines and again it all goes back to the main control unit which I've still got over here. So this particular box will actually be mounted 
These are the brackets that mount it. And it goes under the passenger seat well with a, a quick release top. So should we need to get in there just for regular servicing or to do checks, it's very accessible. One of the things we were just talking about off camera was uh, the power needed to control the compressor slash uh, air compressor. And you said this a certified system runs off typically a 20 vo 24 volt system. Yes. And most other aircraft, GA aircraft, uh, especially experimental runs off a 12 volt. So what did you do to compensate for the voltage? Well, we've had to build uh, a separate electrical system into the aircraft. So we've basically put a step up transformer unit to give us a 24 volt. Um, we've had to then isolate our system from all the other aircraft components so there's no uh, accidents take place um, and what we've actually got is we've taken off our certified system all the controls power switches circuit breakers uh, would be on that unit we've now moved them to the center console and the bottom of the instrument panel so we can switch the units on and off pull in the 24 volt which of course we don't want to do till we've got the engine up and running so and, Once and we've got full power coming through the electrical system, then we can bring this system and engage it. And did you need to add an additional alternator or a, a much bigger alternator to handle the amp load of that? Uh, no, the, the alternator that's uh, on this particular one, and you know, it does vary. It depends on which 162 you have. It's a, it's a choice. But uh, we're working, I think this one is like a 65 amp. So we've got more than enough uh, power to cope with all the systems of the aircraft plus our unit. All right, so walk us through how you work on your, your helicopter here when nobody else is around. Well, the problem we had was obviously trying to get up to the road ahead. Um, so Bob decided, well, let's get a gantry. Uh, let's get an electric hoist. And then we got what we call a patient lift. And I mean, these are available, <laughs> Amazon, anywhere. And they're used to transport people in wheelchairs to and from a bath or a commode. Uh, so that's my seat. This is how I get up there. It's, it's a bit of fun getting into it. But just to give everybody an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So once I'm in, Now, what I learned on very early on is that you have to plan ahead what tools you want to take up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you need a tool bag attached to your, uh, your so screen. As you can see, this is how I do it. Now I can, I can reach everything. So you have achieved vertical flight before your ship is even oh, done. Absolutely, no. It, this is what it's all about, you know, I mean, we're going to be doing a program that allows other vets with disabilities and when I say vets we're not just talking about military we're talking about first responders as well and they can say well you know I'm a paraplegic how, how can I do it I can't reach well this is how you're going to reach you've got to think outside of the box um, to me it looks like a fun way to build a, an aircraft <laughs> <laughs> right now it's great but trust me in the middle of summer it was about 120 degrees up here yeah so the temperature changes probably more. five degrees per uh, foot in the, in the oh, shop yes. huh? Yes. <laughs> so I can check the cobwebs while I'm up here as well. So yes. Yeah, so hey, wh while you're up there and you're comfortable, why don't you tell us how to get in touch with you or to follow this program? Well, if anybody wants to follow it, they want to help or they want to be involved, uh, you can go to our website, which is nv3foundation.org. nv3foundation.org. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for the tour and uh, letting us know about your, your program. You're welcome. Coming down. My children, our children, were 14 and 12. And our 14-year-old got up to give the eulogy. So on this nv3foundation.org website, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll find a video embedded into this website. 
I can show just a glimpse of it here. Unfortunately, there's some background music that uh, I can't share on my channel because it has licenses to other people. But I invite you to check it out, and I'll put a link in the description below this video to their website. Again, scroll down about midway in the website. Play this video. It'll give you an awareness and tug at your heartstrings just a little bit about what's going on with our veterans in suicide. I was aware, of course, that there's a problem with suicide in our country and across the world, and that's a big number. But the vets, the people that have fought for us, for our freedoms, they are, affect, they are very much affected by this as well. So check out this video, and if you can, get involved. Reach out to Stuart. I'm sure he'd love to have a conversation with you about his program and his mission to save lives. You may not know it, but you matter, and I'm telling you right now that you matter.